Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin here in Fukuoka City, and uh, this is Oya Fukudori, which is like a drinking area. And I'm at a park right now, and I just uh, stopped by to make this little intro. And wow, it's filthy here. I mean, it's like uh, seems like a Sunday morning or something after you know a night of partying, and you go to the uh, park, and and you can see that people have been drinking there all night and littering and it's rough looking it's the middle of the week here and some good citizens and looks like family members are cleaning up a bit but uh, a lot of the bars that I used to frequent are gone I don't know what happened to them foreign owned bars but uh, rough rough uh, a lot of drinking a lot of partying in this in the city perhaps all night in the park and the park looks worse for wear for it. But we're here to talk watches. Let's see what they've got. All right, so this is kind of new. You have to ask about the price of each and every watch, and they say that's because of the volatility of the yen. Now, this is a piece that I checked out. This is the first Sprite I've ever seen in my life held in my hand. The price was 4 million yen even, and that comes out to about 30,750 USD. And it's the most expensive of the steel GMTs. And uh, again, it's just such a weird looking watch. I mean, I kind of like it, but it kind of makes me dizzy at the same time. All right, something a little bit more normal is this Pepsi. Now this was going for 3,700,000 yen. And that comes out to 28,500 USD. And this has the Jubilee bracelet, a much more subdued blue than the BLNR, but I'm sure the lighting has to do with that. So again, all the pieces here you needed to ask about, according to them, the volatility of the yen. But I think it's the volatility of Rolex because according to the shop staff, it's taken a dip. Now, he thinks it's going to come back, but of course, you know, if you're selling watches, that's probably what you want to say. This is a discontinued OP116000. It's a 36 millimeter watch. It was going for less than a million yen, which is about seven and a half thousand USD. Interesting concentric dial, a lot of Air King elements, and I don't think this is an investment grade watch, but you'll never see an OP dial like this again, so it's kind of cool. Note the Leopard Daytona. I tried to get him to get it out, but I had overstayed my welcome. All right, so this is Swatch, just kind of a crappy watch in here. This is a Dragon Ball watch, and apparently this is the god character in Dragon Ball, the coolest of the Dragon Ball swatches, but of course I wouldn't be buying something like this. All right, so Iwataya used to have an authorized dealer, but it's gone. So I don't know what happened to it. But um, yeah, just the usual suspects, JLC, Grand Seiko, Breitling, but no Rolex, no Tudor either. A 36 millimeter two-tone turnograph. Now the red prices without tax, tourists don't have to pay tax. That's under 5,000 USD for a two-tone 36 millimeter date just pretty amazing for about 380 USD more you could go for this two-tone 36 millimeter date just with the diamonds on the dial that's a pretty fancy watch for such a low price none of these watches have box and papers this is an oyster course two-tone that's really cheap I mean if you just want to get a Rolex on your wrist and you're not worried about box and papers uh, this is more my kind of style steel tourists would pay just over 3,000 USD it's a really kind of an interesting watch and um, yep, camera issues. I got to get another phone. Here's a, another Cellini. Now this is not as nice as the Cellini I looked at in the previous video, link in the description, uh, but it's a Cellini. We get to the watches you've been waiting for, the steel sports watches. This is a 40 millimeter GMT Master II 16710. You can see it's got the tritium dial, holes case, hollow and link bracelet, paper papers, full set. Uh, much more expensive than those turnographs and date justs, that's for sure. A full set 42 millimeter Explorer 2. Notice the price down. Along with those ask tags at the other shop, I think this is a sign prices are faltering on the gray market in Japan. A pre-ceramic seed dweller box only. 
This is an A serial and being an A serial, it's got the Swiss only dial and you guys don't have a penchant for those. Will they go up in the future? Will they become collectible? I don't know. But you can see this has the original bezel insert and it's ticking so somebody's been looking at it but I would be holding out for a full set. Now, is this a full set? Almost, but not quite. All right, so it's got the box. It's got the paper papers that's under the cushion. You can't see those, but it's there. And it's got a guarantee card from a recent service at RSC, but it doesn't have the goodies. It's missing a lot of stuff. And we'll focus on this piece in the future because it's a cautionary tale of shopping on the gray market in Japan. We'll come back to it, so just hang tight. Bluesies, pre-ceramic bluesies, box and papers. I love the gold writing. I love the pre-ceramic bezel inserts. That is just such a beautiful look and it matches the dial. I really think these are the best bluesies out there, but of course they're dated. A lot of people probably want the newest and the greatest, but I think this is what I would be buying, but it's not my kind of watch. It's just way too flashy for me, but I really respect this. And you know, this is a great price for a couple of full set pieces. Before we move on, I should talk about the differences. The one on the right has the tritium dial. It's got a hollow and link bracelet, so there's not gonna be gold running through the clasp. The one on the left, the Swiss made dial, that's got the Luminova. It's got the solid and link bracelet with the gold running through the clasp. And it depends on what you like. I would be going for the one on the left, but a lot of people think that tritium is gonna be really collectible in the future. A couple of 36 millimeter Explorers. I think this is the best size, but because the newest and latest and greatest Explorer that Rolex has is a 36 millimeter Explorer, I wouldn't be going for these older ones. A two-tone diamond dial Daytona. If you're a tourist, you're going to be paying less than 20,000 USD for this piece. So is this smart money compared to the steel Daytona? My three favorite Rolex pieces from the shop on the right, that GMT Master II, I think that's what I would be putting my money in. Although I'm not sure how I feel about the Tritium pieces and I'd have to make sure it's got the tags and the hang tags and that kind of thing. On the left, both of those are A-serials, so both Swiss-only dials. Now, the one on the left, we haven't gotten to the cautionary tale. We're getting there. But before we do, some bargain basement Omegas like this GMT Function dive watch. And check out the price. I'll let you do the conversion. But... Not very much money. This is a very inexpensive way to get yourself into a good quality timepiece. Now, as far as the wave pattern on the dial, it's a bit much for me, especially under this lighting, but a lot of people like it. And this is for sure a quality timepiece, as are these. So there are options out there if you're not all hung up on that Rolex name. But of course, we are. That's why I exist, right? But there are some good options if you're not insistent on being a Rolex fanboy. We are back and here is the cautionary tale. Don't trust anyone. Do your due diligence. I asked the shop staff if this was a full set. He said yes. I asked if this was the way it came from the authorized dealer when it was sold. He said yes. I said so it is 100% complete. He said yes. BS. This is 100% a complete A serial 16600 is missing a lot, as you can see, and those pieces are really important. So I don't know if he just doesn't know what he's selling or he thought he could get a sale. And by the time I figure it out, I'm going to be back in my home country and it's going to be too late to do anything about it. My guess is he just doesn't know. Um, but this is more expensive than I paid for my full set. So be careful of who you trust. And it might be because they're just ignorant of the way the watch is supposed to come or they're trying to get that sale. But be careful out there. All right, cautionary tale finished. Let me know what you thought about these pieces. Thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.